In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the markings on rulers when you're machine quilting on your domestic sewing machine. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst, and if you like to ruler quilt, you may have lots of rulers, and I always recommend you get ones that have lots of markings on them, but it can sometimes be a little confusing on how to use those markings. So I wanted to share a video with you. It's one that I actually recorded for The Quilter's Way. It was one of the lives we did where I'm showing you how to use a ruler to ruler quilt, and I'm explaining how you can use those markings on the ruler to stitch other lines without having to do a lot of measuring or putting reference lines in that type of thing. So here's the video, enjoy. We talked about the fact that the needle is going down and you're actually stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of that ruler foot, okay? Because the needle goes down, it's a quarter inch away from the edge of that ruler foot. So that can be a little confusing sometimes. And when you're looking at rulers, they have these different lines on them. If you look at this Janome one, for example, there's all these different lines on it, okay? And you're gonna use those to give you spacing between your lines. And some of those rulers have angles on them too. This one does, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But when I want to stitch away on my next line of stitching, on to do the next line of stitching, if I use the quarter inch line on my ruler, and I think I'm gonna be stitching a quarter inch away from that ruler, I'm wrong. Because you always have to take into account the fact that the needle is going down a quarter inch away from the edge of the ruler foot. So if you put the quarter inch line on the ruler on your stitch line, and you wanna stitch another line, you've got a quarter inch from the edge of the ruler, and then you've got a quarter inch from the edge of that ruler foot to where your needle is actually going down. So where you're actually stitching is a half inch away from that drawn line. That may not be where you want to be, okay? You may want to be a quarter inch away. If that's the case, then you need to make sure you put the edge of your ruler along your previously stitched line, okay? Because then when you put your um, ruler foot down, that's where you're going to be stitching. You're gonna be stitching that quarter inch away. So you always need to keep that quarter inch in mind when you're using rulers. So having said that, Let's stitch another line. I'm gonna stitch a couple of, about three more lines that are a half inch away. So how far, or what line I should say on the ruler, should I be using if I wanna stitch a half inch away from that first drawn line? Well, that would be my quarter inch, remember? Quarter inch on the ruler, plus the quarter inch from the edge of the ruler foot to your needle gives you a half inch. So let me line this all up here, and I'm just going to stitch along, and here we go. As I'm going, I'm moving the sandwich, you know, the ruler's going along with the sandwich at the same time, it's all moving. And I adjust my hands once, you, don't, you never wanna outstitch your hand, you never wanna be stitching along and not have your hand next to where that needle is going up and down. So you just stop, and if you want to, you can move the needle, or the ruler, I should say, down as well. Okay. Okay, so you can see there that we've got two lines stitched a half inch apart. I want to continue on, so again, I want another half inch between my lines, so I'm going to use the quarter inch line on the ruler. Just get it all lined up there. Get up to the top here, foot goes down, then the needle goes down, and we go again. So when I talk about outstitching my hand, when I'm up to about here, when you're up to where your thumbs are, you're starting to outstitch your hand. So you need to move your hand, you can move the ruler at the same time. You may need to adjust, line it up again with that previously stitched line, and keep going. Okay. One more line, one more line. We're gonna do another half inch away line using that quarter inch edge, or quarter inch line, I should say, on the ruler, not the edge of the ruler. All right, so I've got four lines st stitched there and they look really nice because they're all even, right? They're all half inch away from each other. They look so nice. So. You know, and people wonder why you'd use rulers. Well, you get this precise, these precise measurements, you know, precise shapes. We're gonna look at some circles in a few minutes too, and you'll see what I mean there. But that's why you use rulers, because it gives you 
those precise lines exactly where you want them and it just guides your foot along as you go. And remember, you don't need, you know, you need to be keeping the ruler down, but you don't need a death grip on it because you are going to be moving along as you go. You just want to make sure it doesn't wobble around as you stitch next to it. And you don't need to, I say press it against a ruler foot. I don't mean that you have to really ram it in there or anything, but you want to, you know, you're, it's the guide that your ruler is, foot is going to be going along. So you want to make sure it's against, otherwise you're going to veer off. All right, so I talked about some of the lines that some rulers have on them. They will have some of these angles on them and this particular one has a 60, a 45 and a 30. So what that's good for is like cross hatching, right? You can do these kind of diagonal cross hatches. So what you want to do is choose, I'm going to use a 30, where's my 30 degree here? Make sure it's the right way up here. There's my 30 degree, okay. So what you want to do is you want to take what angle you're working at, you want to take that and you want to put it on one of the stitch lines. So what I want to try and do here is I want to start here and start going across. So I'm going to take the 30 degree angle, I'm going to put it along my first stitched line and I'm just going to back it up here because I want to start around the corner there. So again I need to figure out where exactly should that ruler be if I want to start right at the edge of my stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle down. I use my hand wheel to do that. So don't be afraid to use your hand wheel if you want to get precise placement of your needle. I do it all the time. So you're going to put that down there and I'll put my foot down so it's all there. And now I can see, all right, this is where I need to have my ruler. So that 30 degree angle line is lined up with my first stitching line. And now I'm going to stitch backwards to my first stitch line. So stitching backwards is not always as easy as stitching forward. Um, I could have done it the other way, I guess, if I wanted to do that. But this was easier for me because I want to make sure I'm going to stop right there. So here we go, We're going backwards now. Okay, so there we go. There's my first line. Pick this up so you can see. So there's my first angled line there. But I want to continue on. Now, how do you continue on? I don't want to have to break my thread. I try to do that as little as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler as a guide and I want to stitch along that previously stitched line. I want to space these a half inch apart. So I'm going to try and move along roughly half an inch. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to use my ruler there and we're just going to go along that line. Again, we're going backwards. Okay, and I'm going to stop where I think is maybe about right. I could be totally wrong and I can keep going if I am. So what we want to do again, as you can see, we're not there yet. That's for sure. We got a ways to go yet. So we'll continue on. All right, so let's see here. Here's my 30 degree line, lining it up again with the line here. And I'm going to be using my quarter inch line on the ruler on that diagonal stitch line that I did, right, because I've got a quarter inch the edge of the ruler and then another quarter inch into the where the needle actually is where I'm actually going to be stitching. That looks about right, so I'm going to stitch now back down this way. There we go, there we go. So that's a half inch this way. So you can see it's forming these kind of diagonal shapes. So if I want to continue on, I would do the same thing down here. I can put my ruler on whichever side works better for me. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to be heading away again. And it might not be perfect, but not to worry. People will not notice if it's not perfect. So let's see. Okay, 30 degree line on the first stitch line, quarter inch line on the ruler, on the line I, the diagonal line I just stitched, and it looks like we're doing pretty good, so we're going to go backwards again. and I'm stopping on that first stitch line. So I'm going to cut my thread here. All right, so you can see what that looks like. Hold it up for you a bit. So that's what that looks like. So you can see how that gives you that diagonal cross hatch. So those angles on there are really helpful if you have those on the rulers. So you always have to remember that when you're ruler quilting, you're actually stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of that ruler. And I think that's how some people get confused. So I hope you found that video helpful and that will enable you to do ruler quilting effortlessly. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to get it in front of viewers who can use this helpful information.
And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.